This is an absolutely fantastic article from Venezuela Analysis talking about this article that came out from the CBC, this Anna Maria Tremani. And it's very easy to break down in layman's terms and show exactly what they're trying to do. It's called yellow journalism. It's journalism that has a desired effect on the reader. It's not just giving you information. Now, real quick, though, I have been asked by a lot of folks about why I don't talk about current events or other things than this. Well, this is not a news aggregator channel. It's a channel dedicated to South America. And the big issue down there, of course, is South America. One of the reasons we did the Antarctica investigation was because of the Chilean desire to modernize their stuff down there and then the very suspicious fire that burned all of their bases to the ground that nobody would know about unless they were looking very specifically into the news of South America. Now, but for those who have asked, I'm going to go kind of around the table real quick and talk about some things that are in the mainstream news. And also, one last time, I am going to answer the question why I am not for the current administration and what my thinking is. All right, real quick. I did a video six months ago, over six months ago now, actually, and I called this, that this woman that came out of Fox News was going to rise very, very quickly. And her background is very, very shady prior to Fox News. And her connections, this woman has alphabet agencies written all over her. And that we might have one being our next UN ambassador is frightening. Now, as far as the... uh, the thing with this Kashagi, and I'm just guessing there at the pronunciation of that name. You know, I guess Jack Sparrow said it best. I can't think of any other, you know, way to describe this other than, really? You're shocked? You're shocked and you're stunned that a king would do this? Yeah, kings do this. This is what kings do. Now, why I don't support the current leader. When I looked into this guy, when he started running, I'm like, well, let's see what he said when he didn't want my vote. Let's see what he said years ago. I didn't even really have to look because I knew who this guy was. I knew what he was all about. He's back and forth. He's left. He's right. He's left. He's right. He's reform. You know, and he'll tell you whatever you want to hear. And this was my problem with the guy. It doesn't matter. And a lot of people wouldn't know where I got this picture from. And about Tillerson. And about what his leanings were when it came to gays and to abortion. See, when you can do this as an evangelical Christian leader, you can stand with thumbs up next to somebody who's posing next to a picture of them on the cover of Playboy next to a woman who's doing time for dealing coke. You know, if you can do that, you're, you know, you're not the uh, same version of Christian as I am. And this should sum it up for those of you out there with daughters. If you can stand with a smile on your face, having your mistress on one arm, which in the picture here, that's the case, your daughter on another from another woman and then two Playboy Playmates in the same picture and smile? Yeah, sorry, you're morally unqualified. I don't care what your positions are on anything. I don't care what you say you think you're going to do when you go to Washington about draining anything. You have no moral fiber to do anything of the such. This says it all. Pictures like this told me everything I needed to know about whether this man was going to have the integrity to follow through on anything he said on the campaign trail. And then there's this that I'm sure you didn't know. See, he was going to run in 2012, but he backed out. 
but he realized this might come to light. And he didn't have the uh, groundwork with InfoWars set up at that time yet. 2,500, Cook County De Democratic Party. 5,000, Friends of Rod Blagojevich. I'll let you guys do your homework on Rod Blagojevich. 10,000, Cook County Democratic Party, two years later. Citizens for George Ryan, 5,098. Citizens for George Ryan, 5,000, 2001. 50,000, Chicago for Rahm Emanuel, 2010. Another two grand. Friends of Blagojevich. And if you're going to make the, the argument that, well, you know, he was in business and he had to, you know, business trumps uh, all, you know, whatever other beliefs you might have, think about you saying that. That money is more important and doing business is more important than your integrity or your moral value or the things that you said that you believe in. When you look, at your choices, we have morally unqualified, extremely morally unqualified, and then we have two other choices. Now, are they perfect? No. Were they the best? No. But over here, absolutely 0.00, .00 chance I vote for either one of these people. Those are my two choices, and we made the best what we could. That's it. And when I go stand before God, I'll be able to say, you know what? That guy that stood with his kid and his whore and two other playmates, yeah, no, didn't want to have anything to do with him. Now, those of you who think I'm a socialist, I'm not saying the U.S. should become socialist. I'm saying that it already is. We did this video on Patreon two weeks ago, and we're going to probably cover it again today. TRAILS. It's an acronym I created. Taxed. Regulated. Permitted. I didn't put the P part in here, but... Regulated. Permitted. Approved. Insured. Inspected. Licensed. Secured. And subsidized. When you take in all of those things that the government requires you to do to be in business or to operate or to do anything in this country, anytime money moves, this government, this country, whatever economic system you want to call it, it's basically CENO. It's capitalism in name only. Because operationally, it's socialist. Now, that's, I guess longer than I wanted to speak about that, but down here in this article, there are some great facts that you haven't been told. Host Anna Maria Tremani began the Venezuela segment during the, uh, and funny, it was September 11th that when it came out, an estimated 2.3 million Venezuelans and counting have packed up and left their country over the last four years. That's about 7% of the population. Now stop and think about that for a minute. Why don't you see article saying 93% of Venezuela completely unaffected by social turmoil and strife. Because that's what the other side of the argument would be. Even with their highest estimates. What about the other 90%? Even if you say, you know, 10% left and then another percentage, let's say another 10% are unable to leave, what about the other 80%? You see, this is the game they play. And this is where it gets really good, down here. They don't mention any time you talk about what's happening in Venezuela and any kind of problem, they don't talk about the sanctions. Not a word about it. Not once did Tremani nor anyone else on the program even mention that Venezuela is under a brutal sanctions regime from the U.S., Canada, the European Union, Switzerland, and Panama. 
These sanctions have been designed to have a crippling effect on the ability of the government of Venezuela to import food, medicines, and basic goods. As explained by Mike Weisrock, co-director of the Center of Economic Policy Research in Washington, D.C., the sanctions do their damage primarily by prohibiting Venezuela from borrowing or selling assets in the U.S. financial system. Now, here's the part that should drive you nuts. They also prohibit Citgo, the U.S.-based fuel industry, company that is primarily owned by the Venezuelan government, from sending dividends or profits back to Venezuela. They own a for-profit business here in the United States. This horrible, terrible, evil socialist company, or excuse me, country, owns a for-profit company here in the United States that earns profit every single day. And that for-profit capitalist business is not allowed to send any money back to Venezuela, even though Venezuela owns the business. Prime Minister of Spain, Jose Luis Zapatero. I must say the intensification of the growth in emigration these past months has been has much to do with economic sanctions imposed by the U.S., and that has been supported by some governments. Aggravated shortages in medicine, insulin, antiretroviral drugs. The majority of the production and distrib distribution of food and basic goods in Venezuela is still in the hands of the ultra-rich. Among other acts of violence and terrorism, the reactionary capitalist class has carried out hoarding, price gouging, and even gone so far as to light food on fire to impose chaos and hunger on the people of Venezuela. This is absolutely the case. If they can't make a profit, they won't allow you to have it. They would rather see people starve and not make profit than keep people from starving and not make the money they think they're entitled to. Would you do that? I want to ask you that honest question. In a shit-hits-the-fan situation, and you're in a survival group, which, of course, by design, it's socialist. Any prepper group is socialist, operates in a very socialist way. And by that, I mean, when you get together in a like-minded group like that, so that the group survives, the survival of the group is paramount over the survival or the profit of any one individual. So if you spent ABC XYZ money on all of these supplies, are you going to charge for them in your survival group? If somebody is hungry, are you going to say, yeah, I want your rifle. Yeah, I want your boots. You know, maybe tomorrow I take your medicines. If you wouldn't do that, that makes you a socialist. And here they talk about the issue with Syria. And this is an excellent, they try to compare this. And this is what we'll leave with. The highest estimate for the number of people that have left Venezuela between 2013 and 2017 is between 1.5 and 2.3 million people. Once again, about 7%. Not even close to the nearly 10 to 12 million people in Syria. However, this statistic from the UN Refugee Agency cannot and should not be taken at face value because it doesn't consider the nationality of the people that have left Venezuela. In a report published by the Colombian Office of the International Organization for Migration in July 2017, it was found that at the end of 2016, 67% of the people crossing into the three most affected Colombian border cities, Cucuta, Via de Rosario, and Aruca, were either Colombian or Colombian Venezuelans. It doesn't talk about the millions and millions and millions of Colombians that have fled into Venezuela. 5.6 million over the last decades from Colombia into Venezuela, overtaxing their systems. And it also doesn't talk about the Venezuelans that have returned. 
And I'll let you read through the rest of this, since we're at nearly 15 minutes. But it tells you the rest of the story. And it's a great opportunity for you to see how our media, and how world media, and how our government, where nothing has changed in the last two years, lies to you in order to get public sentiment swayed on the side of interventionism. So, we'll leave it there. Like, share, subscribe.